for your nails.
was Andre today. Thank you for your service. Welcome to your memorial. Enjoy your day today. Thank you for pointing that out. Oh, I love it. Thank you, guys. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch look so gallantly. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that a flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? And the home of the brave.
I was on the USS Trepang. I was a signalman in the navigation department. Served five patrols. I, I was on the ship from the time they laid the keel till the end of the war. Our first patrol, probably we had some secret information. We went right into Tokyo Harbor. A brand new battleship was coming out. And our, our captain didn't believe in going submerged unless he had to. We were on the surface all the time. And we sank the destroyer escort with one torpedo, put five torpedoes in the battleship, and it did not sink. <clears throat> Their hull is like that, you know, very thick. But it staggered back into port and was out of commission for the war. And for that, first patrol we got the presidential citation which is a pretty good honor the rest of the patrols we did the same thing but sinking mostly tankers freighters for most of the next year then America was winning the war they were bombing Tokyo at with the b-29 bomber, bombers and uh, we spent a lot of the time picking up pilots. One of my favorite stories, and I was on the lifeguard patrol because I was a swimmer in college and high school. Uh, picked up a pilot, he gave me a kiss. These are pilots that were shot down, either B-29 pilots or he took off his wristwatch, gave it to me, and when we got them on the submarine, we brought all these guys back to Pearl Harbor, where they were privileged to go to the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, which was a submarine rest camp. It was our, our rest camp. But anyone shot down got to go there. And he told me where he lived. He lived four blocks from my mother, in my, the home I was born in in Chicago. Went over and saw my mom and dad, told the story, and it was a... Uh, so, one of our lookouts, in a very bad storm, the water was almost, we were 27 feet above the ocean surface, but the waves were that, over that high. And a gunner's mate named Thompson, I, I looked around and said, where's Thompson? You're not allowed to leave your post. Well, everybody said he didn't go th through the hatch to the conning tower, so the only conclusion was he was washed overboard and we were about maybe a mile past where he was what we don't know it's quite, but our captain was so good he got back to the same almost and I said permission to test the light I was I was a signalman permission granted he said but Berg don't shine it up in the sky we were right outside of Tokyo and I just went like this to test the light, and there's Thompson in the middle of the light. And he was the only one wearing a safety vest out of six of us on, on the deck. And they were going to do a movie series called uh, Against All Odds. But they wouldn't take that story because meanwhile Thompson died, and they only had stories where the living person could be on the show, introduced, but that was, uh, it was against all odds to get back to that spot. And he was the only one. And from that day on, we all had to wear, it was just a vest with a CO2 cartridge and a red light so they could spot us. And then we started uh, 
uh, training for the invasion. Uh, my job was a, uh, in the signal company was a wireman, telephone wire, just laying telephone wire from one uh, headquarters, at one command post to the other. So that was what my, I was called a wireman in the seal. At that time, I decided to join the, uh, become, as volunteers, to become a paratrooper. I didn't want to go, otherwise we'd be going in my glider. And I didn't want any part of that. I said, well, let's go to I sign up for parachute training, which I did, and I went through it, and, you know, made I qualified to be a, a paratrooper, and that was it. So then we waited until the day came, June 6th. We didn't know where we were going or anything, but we just moved to southern England where they were all uh, you know, marshalling the troops to go across the channel. We didn't still didn't know where we were going, but we could figure out pretty much where we were you know, going to end up in France. And that was, and then, then uh, we, we actually left uh, England uh, June 5th, the evening of June, night of June 6th, about 11, 11.30, we, we took off from England. And we circled around while all the uh, other planes, you know, got into formation and everything. Then we took off across the channel. And about 1.30, I believe it was in the morning, we landed or jumped into into Normandy, and I was captured by the Germans <laughs> at the end, about the end of the day. Uh, we couldn't have really didn't know where we were. We were lost, we had no idea. Couldn't find where, where our, we were far away from where we were supposed to drop. Our drop zone was. 22 miles, I found out later, many years later, 22 miles from where we were, because a plane was had been hit by any aircraft fire and was off, way off course. I mean, I think it was the pilot, I don't know if they had any control on the plane. So uh, we finally uh, abandoned the plane. And uh, as I find out years later, it was about 22 miles from where we were supposed to have been. And it didn't, so we wandered around all day, that day, June 6th, looking for something, some, uh, something that was in it, where we should go, what direction, where were the rest of the troops? We could knew, we knew where the battle was going on, we could hear bom bombing and all that, but we, and we just couldn't find our way back to, to our troops, our own company. And then about six o'clock that evening, we were, captured by the Germans. They finally got us back out of the, from the Cherbourg Peninsula, walking, marching us, walking, finally got into, into Germany. Or, or well, let's say deeper further into France where they got us on the um, train, uh, boxcars and took us into Germany. And that was, that's where I was for the rest of the war. Well, okay, when I was uh, in Germany, they put me on, into a work party, which they were allowed to do. The, the uh, prisoners of war could, could be put to work in uh, any kind of jobs which are not war related. We did the same thing with the German prisoners. We brought them over here into the work uh, on the farms and things. So anyway, I was in a group of a hundred uh, other fellows and we went, went to Dresden. We were taken to Dresden, Germany and uh, we worked for the Dresden Water and Gas Company, digging ditches. So that's right, that was my work for the rest of the war. <laughs> and uh, then towards the end of the war, the, the being the, in the eastern part of Germany, the Russians were coming closer and closer. So our guards decided to get out of there and they walked us down into Czechoslovakia. There was a prison camp down there, and we were there for about a month, I think, when the Russians came through that part of that country, and uh, our German guards, one day we woke up, guards, gates were open, guards had, had taken off, so we took off. And then about, about a week, we stayed with uh, 
people took us into the houses. They were very nice. And we stayed around there for about a week or so before we met up with the American uh, troops. Or actually, a few Mayor GIs came through town in a truck. <laughs> and we, that's how we got re repatriated.
Yeah, that's what I feel like. Yeah, you don't back at it, man. Hi, Dad. Good. 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 Okay, everybody hear me okay? I'm starting to lose my voice. Okay, our story, March 4th, 2008, Honor Flight Chicago had its first board meeting. At that time, basically everyone wanted to take their dance to see their memorial in Washington, D.C. We knew we had a great idea for the World War II veterans in the Chicago area. At that time, we had very little money. We didn't have these pretty green shirts. We didn't have our gray shirts. We didn't have a lot of veterans. We didn't have any flights. But I'm happy to tell you that today, Honor Flight Chicago is flying its 48th Honor Flight to Washington, D.C. We've had a lot of wonderful surprises today. And really, the last surprise of the day is right now. When you were in, when you were on, uh, during the war, besides wanting the war to end, what was something you really looked forward to? Anybody can yell it out. You're right, mail call. We have an envelope for everybody on this flight. And when you hear your name, I ask you to hold your hand up until you get your envelope. This is a military operation, so you've all heard your last name butchered. Now, I'll do my best not to do it, but you've all heard it every different way. So listen up for your name and put your hand up. Nick Beeshold. Yeah, Kemper. Rudolf Elagrushi. Francis Avalone. Joseph Avers. Right side. Ed Anderson. Edward Anderson, right side. Anderson. Charles Anderson. Right side. G. Edward Burge. Back on the right. Bernard Birkin. 